It's no secret that getting access to Midjourney is not a quick and easy process, but it won't be that way for long. Soon, everyone will be able to create images directly on Midjourney's website. This new website is in alpha testing, and that means access is limited because it's an active construction zone. The full release is likely still several weeks away, but it's going to be a game changer for a lot of people who don't like using Discord. The Discord server won't be going away. This will just be another way that people can create images. And now that the alpha site has been released a bit more widely, I thought I would share a little bit about this new website. So the first big question is, how do you know if you have access to the alpha website? If you've created more than 1000 Midjourney images, you have access to the alpha website. In Discord, just type slash info and look at your lifetime images number. If you're not quite there yet, I'd encourage you to stay to the end of this video, not only to get a preview of what making Midjourney images on the web looks like, but there are features that have already been pushed to the main website that I will be covering. And I posted a poll the other day on the community tab of my channel because I was curious how many Midjourney images you all have made. That poll is still open, so feel free to add your data point. Now, if you have passed the 1000 image mark, you will automatically be using the alpha website. You no longer need to go to a separate URL. You'll know that you're on the alpha site because you'll see this red alpha text in the upper left. First, we'll have a look at the explore page. The explore page is the same for everyone, whether or not you're using the alpha site. So you may have noticed that they've added different ways to view random or trending images. The search bar in the upper right searches all images made with Midjourney, except those made with stealth mode, of course. This is a fuzzy search, so it's not an exact word for word search. On the alpha site, you can start creating images directly from the imagine bar up here, but we're gonna hold that thought for a moment and take a quick look at the archive page. The archive page on the alpha site is the same thing as your My Images page on the main website. Just like on the main website, we can create and add images to folders. There are a lot of different ways to filter our images. I often check the box to only view my upscales or check the option to view the full image instead of the cropped square versions. If I wanna go back and look at images that I made in 2022, I can hover over the scroll bar here on the right and dates will pop up. I can left click once a specific date shows up or I can click and drag to go all the way back to my first image. I started using Midjourney in July of 2022 and apparently my first prompt was unicorn swimming in a dark pond surrounded by spruce forest, which was way back in the V2 days. Midjourney's come a long way in the last year and a half. We can also search our own images using prompt text, parameters such as aspect ratio, and even style codes. So this is all available on the main website too. You don't need to have access to the alpha site to use those features. And now what many have been waiting for, creating images on Midjourney's alpha website. Now I'm not going to go through every feature in detail because like I said, this is an active construction zone, but let's cover the basics. The imagine bar at the top of the page is where you will type your prompts. To change your default settings, you'll click this button on the right. This is the equivalent of typing slash settings in Discord, but you'll see that some of the options are slightly different. You can now set default aspect ratio. You can set default values for stylization, weirdness, and what they've labeled as variety. That's actually the chaos parameter. And when you hover over each of these words, you'll get a description, which I think is gonna be really helpful for people that aren't very familiar with these extra parameters. The images that you see here are my most recent mid-journey results. Each row corresponds to the image grids that we are familiar with in Discord. If it was an upscale, you'd just see one image here. And any images that I make through Discord or through the website will show up on this page. On the right is my prompt text and any non-default parameters that were included for that job. So let's make some images. So I'm just going to type my prompt up in the imagine bar here. You don't need to include slash imagine at the beginning. And if you wanna add parameters, just type them at the end like you would in Discord. So I'll add an aspect ratio of three to two for this. And if you're looking for some prompt inspiration, I just started a new series of videos that I'll link. Okay, and then press enter to submit. Immediately, you'll see a placeholder for the results, the text prompt, and the non-default parameters that were used for that job. Once the job completes, we have a lot of options. If I hover over the white space to the right of the images, I can re-roll the job again using the exact same prompt. I can click this button to put the full prompt back into the imagine bar and edit it before submitting. If I didn't like the results, I can just hide them, or I can click on this more button and get access to the copy menu or download the image grid. If I hover over the individual results images, I can click one of these buttons to generate variations on an image. So this is the equivalent of clicking a V button. And if I right click on an image, I get access to even more options. Liking the photo adds it to your liked photos, which you can then filter on in your image archive. Hiding the image doesn't delete it, but it hides it from your main archive page. 
To pan on an image, click Change AR. There's a nice pop-up window that lets you drag a slider while showing you what the end aspect ratio will be. And you can set your initial image to remain at the center, start, or end. Back to our right-click menu, Vary Region is under Vary and pops up with the same window that we get in Discord. I can choose to upscale subtle or creative. I can remix this image, which is when you run a variation on an image, but you have the option to edit the text before it runs. I can also choose to reuse the text in a new prompt or use the image itself as an image prompt and or a style reference. I can also just click and drag it up to the imagine bar to do that. When I hover over the image, I can choose how I want it to be used and I can even add multiple images. You can upload external images to save for future use as image prompts and style references by just clicking the plus sign. These are all the ones that I have saved in here, so I can click and drag any of these into the Imagine Bar. Let's go back to our image results. If I click to open one of the image results, you'll see a whole menu of options off to the right. Most of these were covered in that right-click menu, but you may have noticed that Zoom Out was not in the right-click menu, but it does show up here. We have Zoom Out 1.5x and 2x, and if I hover over 2x, I can click this little pencil and set a custom zoom value. I suspect these zoom options will be integrated with that right-click menu at some point. These buttons down here also show up any time that you view an image in your archive if you're on the alpha site. And you can click any of these buttons to start a new Imagine job. So that's a quick rundown of Midjourney's alpha site. The most sought after feature is definitely the ability to create images without using Discord. If you have access, try it out and see what you think. And if you notice any bugs or have other constructive feedback to offer, please visit these alpha site discussion channels in Midjourney's Discord server. I'm not affiliated with Midjourney, I'm just a very avid Midjourney user, and I'll do a full breakdown of the website once it's more polished and goes live for everyone. And before you go, please make sure you click the like button, subscribe, all the things. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.